We're back in black, and we're ready for the attack. It's section 2.1, and we're still talking about derivatives. So people, at this point, you should have seen previous videos on what a derivative means, and tangent lines, and approximating a derivative based on a table, maybe all of that good stuff. So here's what we're talking about. We're going to estimate the derivative from a formula. And uh, what kind of formula, you ask? Well, it's a, it's a dirty, stinking formula. What does the world come to? Oh, damn kids, would have gotten away with it too. <laughs> Whew. Oh, don't worry about me, I'm fine. All right, so check it, dudes. I grab a handful of snapping turtles and I throw them into a clown locker room. And the result might look a little something like this. Now, if you're wondering what these clouds are thinking, this one in particular is thinking the following. Oh my. Much like George Takei. You know that guy from Star Trek? Oh, you don't know? <laughs> Lols. All right, so dudes, here's the thing. I grab these snapping turtles, I chuck them into the clown's locker room. This is the mayhem that ensues. And now these clowns run naked through the streets. And their position is given by a little formula I cooked up that I like to call 5t squared plus 6. t is in units of seconds, f of t is in units of feet. So this function f of t tells me position. And what I'm asked to do is estimate the clown's speed at time 3, and maybe I want to estimate this up to four decimal places of accuracy. So dudes, here's what we do. Let's remember a few key things about derivatives. So if you see something that says speed, then you should immediately re uh, remember slash think of the fact that speed is the rate of change of position. You've seen this before because average speed is the average rate of change. So if you see a question that says find the average speed, then you just find the slope of the position function between those two lines, or two points. But here we're not talking about average speed, we're talking about speed at one particular instant. So this is instantaneous speed. And instantaneous speed is the same thing as instantaneous rate of change of position. And instantaneous rate of change means the same thing as derivative. So basically, what they're asking us for here is not just any speed, it's an instantaneous speed. And because it's an instantaneous speed, then it basically means we're finding the derivative of our original function f at the time 3. So the gist of all of this blah 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 here, nerp, 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 all of that is basically saying find f prime of 3. Find the derivative of the function f at the point 3. And uh, remember now that, okay, instantaneous rate of change is derivative, that's cool. Derivative also means the same thing as the slope of the tangent line. So if we're trying to find the derivative at the point 3, that's sort of like trying to find the slope of the tangent line. Actually, it's exactly like that. And so if we want to find the slope of the tangent line, that may seem a little tricky. If we want to estimate it, though, that's maybe not so bad. So here's what we can do. This isn't going to tell us the tangent line, but it's going to give us something close. To find the tangent line, we're going to find the line that connects two nearby points. So let's just say that the graph of my crazy 5x, uh, 5t squared plus 6 thing looked like this curve that you see here before you. <clears throat> and maybe I've got a little point that, no, no. Uh, ha, 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 da, 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 da. Okay, I've got a point there. And now maybe what I do is if I look at the tangent line, remember the tangent line is the line that just skims across the function at that point. So that thing I just drew might be the tangent line. But now maybe I pick a nearby point. Maybe I pick a point that's like, you know, kind of close by, but not super close, like t equals 4. And I find the point on the graph. And now what happens if I connect my original point and that new point is that I get something that looks like this. So here's the point, dudes. That red line is not the tangent line, but it does have a pretty similar slope. Those two lines, the, the white line, which is the tangent line, and the red line, which is not the tangent line, they're different, but they're pretty similar. So if we're trying to estimate the tangent line, it's basically like saying, let's find a line that is close, and we can find the line that's close by sticking with our original point, and then also coming up with a close by point, and then finding the slope of the line that connects those two. So here's what we're going to do. Check it, dudes. Here's attempt number one. We're going to pick two points. Our first point is going to have x value 3. I guess I should say t value 3. 
<clears throat> and our second point is going to have a nearby t value, but we actually want it to be closer than 4. Let's pick something really close, like say 3.01. That sounds like a good idea. All right, dudes, and now if we plug these guys into the original function f, just calculated this puppy up, f of t is 5 times 3 squared plus 6, <clears throat> and that ends up being 51. And now if you plug the second dude, 3.01, into your function, you get 51.3005. So now we've got actually two points. We can find the slope that connects them. And the idea is that the derivative is the slope of the tangent line, which is approximately equal to the slope between these two points. It's not exactly equal to it, but it's close. And that slope is this, 51.3005 minus 51. That's y2 minus y1. We're going to divide by x2 minus x1. We're going to get 0 0.3005 over 0 0.01. And that ends up being equal to 30.05. All right, so that's a pretty good answer. Our derivative is approximately 30.05. But dudes, if we're asked to find it to four places of accuracy, which if you scroll all the way back up here is exactly what it said, we're asked to estimate it to four decimal places then what we need to do is not stop there. We can't stop with this number 30.05. We got to keep going using an even closer point and we're going to see what happens. So let's write down attempt two. <clears throat> and for attempt two, we're going to keep the 3 comma 51 point, but now we're going to pick a point that's even closer. Let's pick 3.001. And then it turns out that our X value is going to be this sucker, 51 point. 030005. Glorious. Um, and remember, dudes, I'm just getting these y values by plugging these numbers, in this case 3.001, into the function that was given. f of t equals 5t squared plus 6. All right, now if I calculate the slope, what do I get? Um, y2 minus y1 is 0 0.03005. A lot of zeros. Divided by x2 minus x1 is 0 0.001. Simplify this, and you end up getting um, what? What do you end up getting? What? Oh, right. Yes, you end up getting 30.005. All right, so check it out, dudes. We picked a close by point, and we got this sucker, 30.05. We picked an even closer point and we get this guy, which is 30.005. So at this point, you might guess that if you keep going and you keep picking points that are closer and closer to three, then what you find out is that the true derivative is just equal to plain old 30 with no decimal point crap. And in fact, this is true. Yay! And everyone's happy. Now, this works out nice because the derivative ends up being this nice even number, which is 30, but in the case that you were getting a crazy decimal, then if you wanted to know that you had four decimal points of accuracy, you'd have to keep going and pick something like 3.0001 and et cetera. And if you find yourself in this situation, I recommend the following approach. Uh, just use a lot of decimals to start with. So for example, maybe instead of starting with 3.01, we could have started with 3.00001 or maybe even more zeros. The more zeros you use, the more likely it is that you're gonna get a good enough answer right off the bat, something that WebWork likes and won't complain about. All right, dudes, that's more or less it. I just wanna remind you of one final thing, which is that f prime of three has units of slope, and the units of slope in this case are, remember f of t was in feet, and t was in seconds. So, if we actually want to interpret the number that we're getting, which is 30, what we're basically finding is that at time three, these clowns are running at exactly 30 feet per second, which is pretty darn fast, and that's what happens when clowns get mauled by turtles. Until next time.